Welcome out there in uh, video land, hot licks. My name is, uh, for you guys that have been reading articles in Guitar Player magazine for a while, my name is Tommy Tedesco. For you people out there that aren't sure I am, I'm the winner of the Bruce Springsteen Lookalike Contest. I mean, that was my claim to fame this year. You know, I always wanted, thought I looked like him, so I'm practicing. But as a studio player, instead of having to look like him, sometimes I have to play like him. That's what we have to do, all these variety of things. And the great part of this is there's no rules when you're trying to make a living playing a guitar. The only rule is no rule. If you know what I'm trying to say, let me give you an example. A few years ago, I got the call to do the John Denver special. And they, they wanted some Mexican music because it all took place on this Me Mexican vessel somewhere down there. So I give them this. After that, I got a call to do Charlie's Angel. The girls were stuck in Puerto Rico. They said, hey, Tom, give us some Puerto Rican music. So I give them this. You know, I wasn't going to learn nothing new. See, that's what I'm saying. No rules. Whatever works. I'll never forget when I did Starsky and Hutch with Nelson Riddle. Nelson come up and says, Tom, they're stuck in Bolivia. There's a Bolivian revolt. Can you give me some Bolivian revolt music? Yeah, Nelson. Tom, you're great. Yeah, Nelson, I know. You got the idea. That's a real studio player. That's what that's all about. You know, kind of do all these things. You're trying to please somebody. Remember, you're not going to be playing this for the Argentinian consul or something, a guy that studied guitar. So this is playing music, playing for a living, trying to make a living at it, right? 
So the main idea, because a lot of times you hit producers in these things, they don't know much about music. You know, you've heard, heard that expression, uh, uh, I don't know much about music, but I know what I like. You know, some of these producers, they don't know much about music, and they don't know what they like either. So these are guys you take a shot at, and that's why I play. There's a whole bunch, and I play for them. My interpretation, playing for a living, classical guitar or Spanish-type guitar. There's certain things you learn. Now, you don't go and learn this and that and this. I learned a little of this, a little of that. It gets me by. I've done many motion pictures, and it's only motion pictures, records, whenever they need this kind of stuff. But let me give you an idea what I'm talking about. Here's one of the things you should know how to do. Give them a slide. Now that's a slide for an octave, right? Go from, play octaves on the end. That's what I call slide one. Slide two is, and then a third. Now all these are basic. Just a little triad. That's two shots you got at the guy, right? He's saying, boy, that's hip. Then the other one, you always end up with a chord. Give him that vibrato. And the more your elbow shakes, the more the hipper it looks. Yeah, so always do that. That kind of looks good. Maybe the guy doesn't know too much, but you give him one of them shakes. Got the idea? So remember, the important thing on slide, slide all over the place. Slide, find something that sounds pretty. Slide up, slide back. And you sound like, you know, and give it a vibrato. You got the idea? Here's one. Got the idea? Okay, that's, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll call them gimmicks because I don't want to say they're dedicated, you know, I didn't study this at Juilliard or any of them hip schools, so I'll call them Tedesco gimmicks. You got the slide, right? Give them the chime. You say, boy, ain't that pretty? We got three here. They always work. Just show them somewhere in the tune. Throw a couple of these in, right? And throw some chords in with open strings. You guys know open strings. Here's one. Always trying to find one hip chord like this. That's Peter Gunn, 1958, by Henry Mancini chord. I always throw one of them in all over the place. Got the idea? One of them hip chords. Now arpeggios. You've all heard of arpeggio. Trying to learn arpeggio. One of these, one of these, one of these, right? The more you do them, the better you get. That's all I know. I don't know any more than that. Except when I play an E minor, I had a hip chord in there. Hip note. That sounds hip with an F sharp. E minor with an F sharp. See? And nice. So it really sounds like you really got that one down, right? One flamenco thing. I'm sure it's not real, but it's real for me. Whenever I say, Tom, flamingo. Never forget, a few years ago, I did a picture with Lalo Schiffer, the big famous leader. And while we were doing the picture, we were doing a Rita Haywood story. He says, Tom, give me those uh, flam flam flamingo, you know. So I says, okay, and I did this. Then I looked at him and said, Lalo, would you like, like me, the... Uh, Di Vincenzo Flamenco. He says, let me hear it. So I did a... He says, oh yeah, give me the Di Vincenzo Flamenco. Di Vincenzo is a kid I went to school with. He never played guitar. He, in fact, he had no idea. He's famous all over the world with Di Vincenzo Flamenco. <laughs> give me a seat, boy, Lala, look at him. Yeah, that's great. He, he heard that. He knows you hit a guitar, that's hip. Yeah. All right, hey, remember, guys, you might laugh at all this stuff. I, I do this for a living, and I love it. Every time I do it, I say, wow, that's great, Tom, you know. <laughs> yeah, you know. Okay, now the melody. Always give them some trace of a melody, like a... Maybe with octaves. That always sounds good with an octave. This is not just any single melody. This guy say you don't play chords. Well, I went to church as a kid. The priest didn't sing chords. He went... They used to hum these things without chords, and that's what I do. I think of a melody on this, either octaves, single notes. It's up to you make up the melody, right? Okay, how about thirds? Right? Okay, let's get the fourth. When we 
did the thirds. If you can't hear thirds, think you're thinking of Mexico. Mexico. Yeah. Thirds, orient. Fourths. Fifths, still orient. You got the idea? You can invent, you can play three days by just doing these little gimmicks. You got the idea? Octaves, fifths, fourths. Back to Mexico now. Six. When you do all this stuff, play one thing, every once in a while, show off technique. Because you got to show off the technique. Then the guy knows you play pretty, pretty good. You know, everybody says, wow, this guy's got chops. Besides that, show a little feeling. Now, when you give him the feeling, if he looks like he doesn't understand feeling, maybe he hears, you know, with his eyes instead of his ears, move your shoulder. Then you got real good feeling. Now he understands. They give him a face shoulder. That's feeling. He thinks that's it. But here's the feeling. It's in your hand. But maybe you need some convince him. Convince him. Give him one of them. Got the idea? See, and, then, and then all of a sudden. Remember, you wanted to learn what scale, the harmonic minor scale. I use that all over the place in this kind of music. I use it on endings almost all the time. I'll play it slower. The feeling. Years ago, I studied harmonic minor, but my teacher never told me you could use it in music. We just everybody learned it, but nobody knew what to do with it. So, in recent years, I use it with a slide. Couple of chimes. You hear just a few little things already. Just there, I've used a few gimmicks. Okay, the other thing is when uh, whenever I do this stuff, always try and end with a big ending, something like this. Now you go to the right. How about that hip backward motion? See, that always looks good on camera. See? Doesn't look like you're hip, you know what you're doing? Get that hand. Now, if the guy's a young guy, do one thing even after you do that. Do one of them album cover looks. You know, we're just staring at nothing. I don't know. Every once I see a lot of album covers. Got if I, the guys, see, they're young, give them another one of them looks. You know, if I was better looking, it'd come off better, but just, you know, I still know how to stare at whatever I'm supposed to do. Got the idea? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let me go through. I'm going to play a little tune, and I'm going to try and use as many of these as possible. Every once in a while, I'll tell you what I'm using. I'm just going to start playing.
three times. Album cover look. Okay. You people out there got the idea, right? I don't know how many I gave you. 15, 16, 17. Remember, I'm not doing this so you can study out of a classical guitar book or anything else. These are just in case a guy comes up and says, Hey, can you play me something? Latin? Oh, yeah. So that saves you. I've been doing that for, like I said, a million years. Every once in a while, you're you'll get what I call the negative response. That's for somebody that's went, you know. I, in fact, I had it about a year ago. I started, I was out in Europe uh, traveling around, and I stopped in, at, uh, stopped in at this classical guitar society in France. And so they invited me in, and I sat in, you know, and the first guy, you know, there was about 40 or 50 kids, the first guy played a piece called... He said this was a piece called Leander, period, uh, I think it was 1812, 1817, you know, written by Albanus. So then the next guy come in. was written by Johann Sebastian Bach, period, 1717. So they asked me if I'd like to play, so I come up and did, you know. finished they were all staring at me I said oh yeah I forgot this piece was a piece written by Fats Waller called ain't misbehaving the period was lunch period because Fats loved to eat I don't know when he wrote it but he's like me I, I write while I eat and so they kept giving me these funny looks you know and I said well you know it's kind of different guys I, I realize I'm not in the same bag as you because I do things differently I mean just for whatever is needed and I says for instance I've been doing a lot of things wrong by your world but not by my world I says, for instance, what do you see wrong? And the first guy says, well, you're playing a classical guitar with a pick. I said, well, let me show you why I use a pick. the pick. Let me show you what I sound like. Well, how do you want me to play? This way or with the pick? They say, well, but that's the right way. I said, wait a minute, let me do this once more. Let me say, this is wrong. That's wrong. That's right. That's wrong. I said, and this is right. I said, that's right. Oh, boy, that's wonderful. I said, I, see, I can just see me doing it that way. I see how much work. I, said, I, I mean, I know I look like the truck driver. I'd be moving the whole truck when I go, go with this. And I said, I, I can't buy that one. They said, well, the next one, you have dots on your guitar. I said, well, the dots are to protect, you know, save me from unemployment. So what do you mean? I said, well, you see this dot here? I know where that is. I got good eyes. I hit it all the time. Now, if I don't have a dot there, 
And I'm working with Henry Mancini. I can just see doing a big picture with Henry Mancini or John Williams, one of the hot guys, you know, and going. And they say, Tom, what are you doing? Well, it's okay, Hank. I don't have dots. Ain't that great? Let me hear you play a solo. Well, just a second. Boy, I thought you played better than that. No, oh, well, yeah, but I didn't. I used to play better, but now I'm doing it right, you know. You follow the idea? Come on. I play guitar for a living. I play guitar for a living. In fact, uh, quite a few uh, years ago, we did the movie The Deer Hunter. John Williams did it, you know, one of the top classic guitar players. I played guitar, too. And you didn't see me going, no, because I couldn't. He was doing his thing, and I was going, you got the idea? I was doing it because that's what I do with it. And, they said, and the guys looked at me and said, well, the other thing you're doing wrong, you're supposed to have the guitar on your left. I ain't had a lap in 27 years. Come on. How am I going to have it? So I got two more inches before I retire. I don't age. Yeah. Most guys retire at age 60, you know. And I, when my waist is 60, I got that much more, and then it's all over. Then I don't play. So now, now you got the general idea of what, uh, what I do with this classical guitar stuff. Just play whatever is needed. I'm going to play a... Uh, I'm going to play... Be, because we played earlier. I'm going to play a... Room, uh, tune called Room 2000. This is kind of a jazz samba. It's my tribute to Larry Carlton, because I remember years ago he made a tune called Room 335. And I guess I have one of them around here or whatever it is. But in the meantime, I decided, okay, Larry, I moved down from 335, I moved up to the 2000th floor, which naturally this was Yamaha 2000. So Larry, I wanted to see on the 1900 floor, but I'm going to play Room 2000. You know, you heard a variety of ways like where I kind of try and please the people in Latin, all the way from the, the little sambas, to the jazz sambas, to the classical, to the, to the Di Vicenzo Fomenco, you know, so a little of all that stuff. And I've done many movies. And when I keep trying to drive it, everybody, I don't play classical guitar. If they want a classical guitar player, I say, go call that classical guitar player. I just happen to play a classical looking guitar because it's got nylon strings but I play it the way I love to play it. This is what I play. Remember we talked about open strings? Octaves. Chimes. Producer's kind of young. You can always give one of them young bends. They know what that is. And backwards. Get the idea? You know, 
was, I'm thinking about, I was just talking about producers and so forth that you have to please and different leaders throughout the years. Now, another person that's very important to, to please out there is what I call the singer. Because the singers are kind of a different breed. You have to kind of uh, impress them when you work with different singers. I work from Sinatra's all the way from Sinatra and Streisand all the way down or up to Tiny Tim. It all depends on your mood, you know, through the years. I work with all these people, just Beach Boys, Dan's and Dean's from Net World and and Petula Clark from before, and, and Ella Fitzgerald, and Sarah Vaughan from the jazz field. So it's kind of different. If you're working sometimes by yourself, you want to be able to give them an ending that fits. Now, the first thing, let me say this. What you play for a singer, you know, is not what you play it determines how much money you're going to make. It's which singer you play it for. I'll give you an idea. Many years ago, I played for a friend of mine, Matt Dennis. He wrote this tune called Angel Eyes, and I did this. A friend of mine a few years ago, Nelson Riddle, called me. He was doing an album to show you the difference, and it was for Linda Ronstadt. It was called the What's a New Album. It went like this. What's new? How is the world treating you? It's treating me great. I mean, it's about 3,000. You see the difference? Now, remember I did... All that. That was 27 bucks, right? Okay. And you want to see what $3,000 hands look like? So remember, it's not what you play, it's who you play with. So that's what has to do with strictly singer. But to keep a singer happy, I always, like I said before, give them a good ending that uh, they've recognized that means something to them. There was a tune years ago called George. It went like this. Tune will be over and you gotta pick out an ending. So you figure, well, let's see who's gonna be this ending. Figure maybe you're working for a blues singer, or Reza Frank, or somebody along them lines. So you give her what I call a blues ending. Goes this way. Georgia. Ah. My, my. Now how about if it's a jazz player? You give him a jazz ending. Georgia. Ah. Big band singer. Give him a big band ending. Count bassy ending. Georgia, ah, my, my. 
Dixieland ending. Georgia, oh my, my. How about a classical ending for a classical type singer? Georgia, oh my, my. Folk singer. Georgia, ah, my, my. I call this a sound effects ending. Georgia, ah, my, my. Las Vegas, show business ending. Georgia, ah, my. Guitar Institute ending, whatever ending. Georgia, oh my, my. Now, every once in a while, there's a couple endings I'm not too sure of how good they are. Watch how easy it is to play an ending that you're not sure of. See, now, watch my hands. Now, I'm going to give you a country ending, right? Now, you ready for a country ending? Or country lead? Now, Georgia, oh my. See, I was pointing to the side here because I have my guitar player. Hi, Joe. How you doing? We had him play the leg. Let's try one more country leg. Joe, play a country leg. Uh, Joe, how about giving me maybe a rock and roll leg? Okay, enough, Joe. Enough. I don't want to hear no more of that stuff. Oh, back to where I was. You got the idea? When I can't do the ending on the studio call, there's always two or three of us sitting there. If it's country, Joe does it. If it's big band, what's new? You remember doing big band? I'm going to do that. So that's the whole idea of these things. Let me play you a tune now. A tune called Londonary Air, where I do one of them hip things. I turn the sixth string down the D. I always see it on TV. It's great. And now, the ending on this tune I'm going to play is what I call a happy time of the year ending for me. Christmas type. Now we'll bring this D back up E. You notice a lot of the chords I play here every once in a while. I just play a little chord. I'm not thinking of chord theory. Every once in a while I'm playing something if I want to get down here. You know, you remember the old G, E minor? A minor, E7. Well, I never play those chords. I always add the extension. You know what the extension are. You don't play a G. You play a G, 
major seventh. You don't play an E minor, you play E minor ninth, E seventh, flat of fifths, flat of ninth, raised ninth, flat of fifths, playing A minor ninth, flat of ninth, raised fifth, flat of fifth, flat of fifth. The whole idea is to all of a sudden get these kind of these kind of what I call them the hip chords. If I want to start here, by going from here down here chromatically, I can play any chord I ever saw in my life. It's not going to be right, but it's sure not going to sound wrong. Well, for instance, I want to end up on G major 7, right? I'll start up here. Played some minor, some flat of fifth, some C7. It doesn't matter to me, as long as this goes down there chromatically. Got the idea? OK, we'll try it again. D13. D flat 13, C minor 7, D 13, all I know is it. That's how I do these. These are little shortcuts for me when I'm playing a tune. There's a tune there, years ago I was a kid, and I always kidded about, I always wanted to write a song and be a folk singer, a bunch of things. So the first thing they did, they gave me a guitar, right? First thing when you do with a seven-year-old kid from Niagara Falls in Buffalo, New York, you're going to make him a cowboy, right? I want to be a cowboy. So I started singing cowboy. I learned how to bend that boy, I thought it was a killer. And I started singing. From the valley they tell me I'm leaving. From the valley they tell me I'm gone. He says, come on, you gotta be kidding. These ain't valleys, they're alleys here in New Jersey, where I'm from. They said, you can't be no country guy. You know, they said, whoever heard of it? Tommy Tedesco and his horse Guido. You can't be, there ain't no cowboys out there to obtain. I said, well, that's right, there's Ken Maynard. And Buck Jones, Tommy Tessa, Horst Greeter, I think they're right. And, you know, I said, well, I'll be, there was plenty of Italian guys singing, so there was Frank Sinatra and Tony Bennett, Perry Como, so I thought I'd be a, a, a one of ballad singers. I've got a crush on you, sweetie pie. And he said, you can't be a ballad singer. I've got a crush on you. You killed her to death. You look like a sumo wrestler. What is that crush? You mean I can't be one of them? Here I learned all these hip chords and I can't do them. They said, no, not yet. Oh boy, and I can't do my country legs. I said, well, so I said, and I said, well, I'll be a folk singer, you know, to, you know, now move these two fingers. I always see folk singer move these fingers, so I'll be one of them. Jimmy crack corn and I don't care. Jimmy crack corn and you don't care. Jimmy crack corn and we don't care. And we don't care. Nobody cares about cracking corn and all. They said, no, you can't do that. Burl Ives did that, you know. And besides, you haven't suffered enough. As you haven't suffered enough, you realize how many hours I went right now without eating and I haven't suffered enough? I know what suffering is. I do this stuff all the time. So I said, it can't be that. So I decided instead, well, I'm going to be a, I'm going to write it now. I decided to write my, what I call my hip chord song. You know, and I'm going to use some of these chords. And you'll hear, whenever I play chords, I slide into chords, like a G minor. Here's a G minor, right? I'll slide into it. C7. Yeah. hear this kind of playing in my thing and I call it my hip chord song it goes like this always want to be like Barry Manlow write them hit songs and I have my own show but I doubt if this will ever come to be because everything I play is kind of hip and strictly for me I don't know too many hip chords, because I never went to school. So since I didn't know too many of them real hip chords. B7, C7, oh yeah, hip chord. That's it, I got to get a hip chord in. I didn't know too many hip chords, because I never went to school. So since I didn't know too many of them real hip chords, the few I know will have to do. There's a G minor, a C7, and an F in this hip chord. G minor C7 to F and a Barry Manilow chord. G minor C7 to F and a hip chord. G minor C7 to F and a Barry Manilow chord. Like I said, don't know too many hip chords. Because I never went to GIT. 
So since I didn't know too many of them real hip chords, studio work was perfect for me. There's a D minor, there's C7 and F and a hip chord. D minor C7 to F, a mandolin chord. D minor C7 to F and a hip chord. D minor C7 to F and some real hip chords. backwards, I forgot that. Backwards. Now you got my hip chord stuff and my chord style stuff. Now, a lot of, you notice throughout this uh, video, I've been using a lot of chop stuff here. And it's kind of what I call my, my style of picking. I call it economy, economy type picking. In other words, when I, when I pick, if I'm using two notes, I go down and up alternate, right? But most of the time I'm using three notes, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down. I tag every new string with a down stroke, and I put three notes on every string. This makes me sometimes play real fast runs. I don't even have to worry about the chord I'm hitting, because it fits everything, as long as you're, as long as you're finding any note. For instance, here's an A minor ninth. I'll play against that. See, I was just worried about that one note. Here's B flat is the top down. Fits every chord. Play, play me a chord, Joe. Tell me the top note. E flat seven. You hear that chord? Okay, now I'm gonna play the same run as I've been playing all over. E flat, play it once more. Right, play me another one, different note. And the idea works on everything. So that's what I'm doing. Just down, up, down, down, up, down. Whenever I want to do fast runs, I do stuff like this. Now, people often wonder about technique, picking hand, left hand. I was very lucky. I mean, I, I, when I play the guitar, let's first look at my right hand. I just crease it here. It fits, so I lay it down there. No big deal. OK. My, my pick hand is like a handshake. You shake my hand. Here, put the pick in there. Same thing. I mean, you read, I, I've read some books where pretty soon the guy looks like he's going to break his arm playing, arms, elbows going into that. But remember, this, uh, this arm, left arm, put it in here. Just grab it. No big deal. Just grab it like this. Put your, and start playing. I see guys with their, because they read the book, they got to come around this. That's when guitar players, guitars were like trees in 1926. You don't play that way. You just get comfortable. I'm comfortable here, comfortable there. So the idea is if you're comfortable the way you're playing with your pick, then just play the fast runs all over. And it kind of helped because, like I'm saying, a lot of times you play for fast runs for three reasons. Number one, you want to show off. All right? Okay, because how do you show off like that? I think I'll show off. Nobody believes that yet. Nobody believes that. So you play fast run because you want to show off. Number one, two, is when you go there. Because it is real impressive and you really want it in there, right? And that's probably kind of a nice time to do it, too. The other time that I use it is when I'm stuck. Boy, you can get stuck a lot. You're sitting there, you don't know where to go. Where do you go? All the fast runs. But let me show you. I'm just going to go between A minor and B minor. And play a little melody that I'm going to invent right now. I'm playing. And you'll hear the run. Thank you. 
All I did on that was just play the key of G scale all the way. But I played fast. But if anybody said, what'd you play? I played G scale. So if you're going to stay there and practice, just practice G scale. You practice for days, hours, until you get that. G scale. G scale over and over, right? Don't start on G. Just start on your F sharps. He's playing A minor, B minor. That's right. Got the idea. The idea is just to keep playing. Pretty soon after you do this for a few days, trouble with most of us is when we're fooling around, we do it go. Okay, got that next. Got that next. Learn one thing. I don't care if it's Yankee Doodle. Learn it so you play it perfect. Then you go on. Don't go on until you Because the first thing happens when you do it this way, when you're playing, everything you play is perfect. They might not know. You only know three minutes of music in your whole life. But when they hear it, Got it? The idea of earning, learning, and then go on. But you read so many chord books and different, they give you eight, seven thousand chords. Guy works the first four chords out. By the time he's through the center of the book, he knows the center chord, but he forgot all the beginning ones. Learn them. Learn only five chords. Don't learn, don't know, I don't call the living room chords. Don't play the living room chords until you're ready, until you learn the basic ones. In other words, if you're on a job, be able to, be able to play D major seven. <laughs> He made your seven season. Go over and over. Get fun. Don't do that. You know how the guys do? Where, where until you got there? Then you go a little bit. Got the idea? And then when you got it, move on to the next. Guys often wonder how about me, how I got started. It's kind of kind of funny because I came out to California. I went out there all oh, in the 50s and I just I was just starting to play with some jazz and thing. I thought, boy, it's going to be hip. And I, I was working with him. You know, I, I showed up there and I was playing some like the jazz, like Miles Davis type thing. A job. I think I worked one time playing the job. So after that, I said, well, maybe. Started working with singers. One week with Peggy Lee, one week with Mel Carme, and I think there was one more week with, uh, oh, I think it was uh, Dinah Shore, and that's all I had gone. So I figured, well, what am I going to do now? So I finally got a steady gig, and this was at Douglas Aircraft, moving warehouse boxes all the time. And now I'm working day, you know, hating every second. So guys say, we're just study and start practice. And I said, Douglas Aircraft. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, when I went home, I would w work from 9 in the morning, moving warehouse boxes, to about 5 at night. I come home and I would practice to 1, 2, 3 in the morning, just practice. And they said, how'd you get by? I said, it was easy. I'd be practicing skill. And then somebody said, Douglas Scarecraft. Douglas. 
Douglas Aircraft, I practice that. Douglas, the more I you said Douglas, it was like a hypnotic state. Douglas Aircraft, warehouse box. Boy, did I get some chops in about one year. So that's when I, because see, most of the time, I was a guitar player. You read in, in the guitar player magazine, you feel like you're, you're all over at 17. You know, you read this kid, uh, they interview him, he says, well, when I was 13, I had the chops of uh, Chick Corea on guitar. And the other guy says, when I was 17, I had this. Well, all I know is that when I was 24, I was a Douglas Aircraft. What well, didn't even get into fifth position yet, you know, I was, and I was studying. But I decided, I practiced scales, I practiced chords, you know, then I learned my first hip chord, bought it, I feel like I knew something. Wow, two of them, three of them. So I practiced, right? So I started putting in 10, 11, 12 hours a day practice. It went on for about a year and a half. And so I woke up one day, I says, wow, I'm starting to know how to play the guitar. Because before, uh, you guys always think you can get lucky. You know, the magic wand, remember? You can't play. The magic wand. Pow. Boy, I'm glad he touched with that magic wand. Don't happen, does it? Also, it doesn't happen like golf. Guys go on a golf course. When they go on a golf course, guy never played golf in his life, and he hits balls around the ground. Then he hits one, wow, one, 200 yards. He turns around, boy, I never played golf. Look at that. That don't happen on guitar. In other words, when you get your first guitar, you'll go. You don't do, do, do this and then. Boy, I got lucky. Never played guitar. Then... Boy, you got lucky. Never played guitar. You don't do that. That only happens in tennis and golf. You know, to do this, you got to think. With me, it was Douglas Aircraft. Maybe you would. Man, I'll meet Shirley someday and she'll love you. I don't know what it is. You know, whatever it is, I don't care what it is. If it is anything, that's what will make it. You, everybody out there has got a different reason to do it, you know. And I knew mine. I hated work. At that time, I hated it. I hated that. I said, what do you, I wanted to be a guitar player. You know, so, and the funny thing of how I finally got started in the studios, after all this, you know, bum, 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 and then Bossa Nova came in. Bum, 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 Building it started, Boston, still in Douglas. The weirdest time I got a break because of my name. My name was Tedesco, and there was a famous composer called Casanova Tedesco, okay? and he wrote a couple pieces for Segovia. So they called uh, Barney Kessel one day, and they say, you play classic guitar? And Barney says, no. They say, uh, Howard Roberts is there. Howard Roberts, you play classic guitar? Tedesco, you play classic guitar? And that guy says, yes. I mean, I'm making $2 an hour at the factory. I got a chance to make $40 an hour. Sure, yeah, I play classic guitar. I showed up on the job. Then it was one of them cowboy and Indian movies. And this was the cowboy. Here was the Indian. Cowboy. I was in debt. A few weeks later, they called Barney. You play classic guitar? You know, no. Howard, you play classic No. Tom? Yeah, I play. No, it was Marlboro cigarettes commercial. Bunch of horses. I fell in love with classical music right on the spot. Four, four a few months later, they called Barney because you play classical guitar? Yeah. Howard oh, Roberts. Yeah, they all, they all bought the same pick I did. Yeah. And it was kind of nice, you know. My, mine is dedicated to me. It says Fender Heavy. You know, I guess they've talked about my body. I don't know. But then that started. And the next thing I know, guess what happened? My stuff. My Spanish started. And I started making a living, you know, playing it. And it's funny, all this time, if I had watched and been a kid and watched concerts and stuff, like I say, all this time while I was working, if I work one job in a week, I practice the rest. Because you, you have to be a dedicated guitar player whenever time. I don't care if you're 17 or if you're 45 or 50. I know people all age. All of a sudden they say, I'm going to play. And they sit there and you have a good time. Now you get lucky because somebody pays you money to play guitar. You know, now you're home free. Wow, somebody gave me money to do this. I love this. Wow, I'm really lucky. 
everybody's time comes on their own. Don't worry of how old you are. Don't worry if you're 15, 19, 41, 40, because it's a ball play, and that's why you play guitar, because you love the sound of it. I love it. And then, like, because I've been very lucky, people end up giving me extra money to do it. So that's what I'm saying. That was my history. Yours might be completely different. It doesn't matter. Everybody's different on this stuff. I'll never forget, after doing this, though, another thing people got to learn is when you get a challenge. Now, I got a challenge. I had never been before conductor before, right? Now, everything was fine for a while. Playing all the fancy stuff. Now, I showed up in this orchestra. Like I said, I never saw the conducting hand before, right? So I'm watching, and I looked at my part, and the conductor's up there, a famous Russian composer called Dmitry Tiomkin. And I'm looking up, and uh, I looked at my part, and I had like 90 bars, right? Except I had to rest 75 bars and then come in the last four bars. Now he's conducting, he's going like this. I I'm still from the night comes. That man, hey, there's that chick. Come on over, come on, hang with the guys. I'm still from another world. I don't know, I didn't know what he was doing. But I did know when he did this, and there was no music. I said, oh, man, it's got to be me. And sure enough, he looked up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Guitar player, where are you? Here. You didn't play. Uh, sorry. So I started getting the shakes. Now I'm shaking. You know, you guitar players, everybody knows what the shakes are. See, they start in the little finger when you're standing in front of your class and you got to play by yourself, right? You remember all that stuff, you guys out there? The shakes are okay, as long as it stays in this part of the body. You're okay. Okay, but mine got to this left knee. Now you know you're dead, all the way through the body. So I go, guitar player, you out. So he throws me out, 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 and I just you know, snuck out of there. Fortunately, he didn't know who was and everybody. The thing that got me back a few years ago, I went home, I practiced for 50 hours a day. You know, I just practiced, 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 practiced. And then later, I was lucky I did all the, Elvis Presley came into Hollywood, did some movies. So all of a sudden, Elvis Presley in Mexico, I give him my shot. Boy, that Tedesco was good. Yeah, I was he's great, yeah. So that's what got me in. A few seconds ago, we were talking about my disaster there with uh, conducting. And I've always advised young players all over, pay attention to the conducting of these uh, different, you might be in a studio, or you might be, watch your composers, conductors all over in some Broadway show, anything. Just watch their hand. Because hypothetically, if they're in 4-4, four, four, they should be doing something that looks like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, Four. The only trouble is when you're not used to conductor, is one might be here, it might be down here. But generally a guitar player, if you just watch for a while, always watch, and you, pretty soon you get used to it. Three, four, one, two, three, four. Now if it's a three, he's probably going to do this. One, two, three, one, two, three. How about a bar of four and a bar of three? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one. And these guys that they're hot out there, they really know what they're doing. You know, don't forget they take pride in standing up with their suit and doing all of the routine. Well, you better take pride in following, because if you're not with them, you're in trouble. And that's what happened to so many guys that, that started in the studio. Great guitar players, they know, young guys. They've never saw a conductor, never played. And the whole idea is, I'm not saying you've got to be great, but at least be able to watch them. I blew two or three jobs at the start, because I couldn't follow a conductor. And I, I was lucky. I mean, I, I was able to save myself through the years later. But don't take the shot that all of a sudden you blow two or three and then you don't have a chance anymore. You might be from a small town, a big town. It might be a, a little thing with the school band. It might be the Philharmonic. But just do it. And after you watch them, you'll say, oh, yeah, I can see that that's four. Oh, yeah, I can see it's three. Don't worry about your, your weirdo times. You'll learn that by the time it comes. Because like I say, after you learn, it's called what I call on-the-job training. But don't blow it right off because you don't even know what's happening. The other thing I want to show you here, and I kid about this, my electric guitar, right? And when you work in the studios, it's amazing when you got these little pedals all around. Here's a little pedal, I'll just press. Now watch, this. here's what this sounds like. Years ago, I started with a pedal. Now it was mystery. So if you remember Peter Gunn, you ever see Peter Gunn rerun? If you ever look in Mother's Place, a little nightclub, and you see a kind of guitar player that only weighs about 160 playing the mother with the trio, guess who it was? It wasn't Van Halen, it was me, honest. So this is 1958. So these things come in for a lot of movies. And they use them for destruction. And like I say, when they like that stuff for a while, I love it. First of all, as soon as I plug that in, I make more money. And that's very, you know, I love that too. But what I find is whenever you get a pedal, I don't care what pedal it is, work it to death. 
if it's the hip pedal that's going on, work it so you know more than the first guy that got the hit record on it. Because I've seen pedals make more money than any three human beings. Guy walks in and says, oh, what's that? You know, and I've pulled more acts with this thing through my, through my day. Like all of a sudden I was doing that, you know, and then all of a sudden the wall will come in. And I just, and that's what I said. It was hip, but I went, I always liked that ending. If I forgot my wall, just something. Elaborate, you gotta do something. And I always thought this pedal was broke when it sounded like this. But I managed to use it. I was doing an underwater movie with Jack Cousteau. Jack, Jack, Jacques, whatever it is. It's one of the Cousteaus, right? And there was this, it was, there was one of these things, uh, there was a shark going under the water. And the guy wanted some underwater music and I gave him. Oh, they loved it. I said, oh, that's great. Yeah, thanks. You know, you get cocky. Yeah. You, know, you swear I just invented the greatest lick of all time, but I loved it. And needless to say, if he liked it, I know I'm going to use it again. Later on, we were doing a Charlie's Angels episode and they mentioned a synthesizer player who was uh, uh, Ian Underwood. They said, Ian, give us some, some real weird music because uh, Fair Fawcett's putting her hand in this gopher hole and there's going to be a snake. And he's fooling around with his synthesizer, and I'm going. And he says, oh, yeah, yeah, that's great. He said, what do you mean, Ian? You know, he says, I didn't do nothing. It's Tom. Tom, that's great. Yeah, thanks. You know, and I'm sitting there cocky. Yeah, I know what I'm doing. You know, I'm looking forward to the next gig. Who knows how many, yeah, who knows how many gopher holes you're going to have to plug up, you know. It doesn't matter to me. And if you guys saw the, the movie with Burt Reynolds, uh, Cannonball Run, they had a scene where the, there's a big police car chase, and, and all of a sudden the chase, the, the Police cars went in a swimming pool. They said, anybody hear underwater music? You can see my hand going, yeah, you know what I mean? You know, and they said, okay. So it was a country day, and I'm going. Boy, Tom, hey, whoa, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, I really got him underwater. So I said, that's what these effects are. You know, I love these things. So as far as I'm concerned, they were real good. These were the early stuff that I used, you know. And then also, and I kept doing it. Yep. All the stuff. Pretty soon, then the nemesis came in. The guys, I, I call them, the guy, the guys come in. The guys were coming in, going, and I didn't never knew they were tapping their guitar, and I kept trying to tap my guitar, but I never found the right place. It was, a, you know, I tried it there. And so, and I figured, well, later, when I, that's when I went back to the guys. I figured, let them just roll it, because I could never make it that way. But I'm going to play a song, and I call it with this sound. And I call it the studio guitar blues, studio guitar player blues. It goes like this. It's hard to sing the blues when you got a Cadillac. It's hard to sing the blues when you drive a Rolls Royce. It's hard to sing the blues when you got a belly with big, fat, and full. But I remember. I remember. I remember when I had no Cadillac. I remember when I had no car at all. I paid my dues a long time ago. But I remember. I remember, I remember, like it was yesterday, blues, oh no, I almost threw the guitar, now this here, now that I got my I wouldn't be right an Italian note without his mandolin, an Italian studio player, but that's my mandolin. And I'm not exactly in love with my mandolin playing, but it's created quite a career, miscellaneous career for me. And many people around the country, kids that have been in my seminars, kids that went to the Guitar Institute that I've talked and talked about this, because they think it's a world of study. I'm saying, hey, go buy a $40 mandolin, tune like a guitar. But when you tune like a guitar, somebody says, do you tune your mandolin like a guitar? Don't say yes, say, no, I tune it. Plectrum tuning, that sounds hip. It's like a guitar, but you realize how, how's you tune your mandolin? Plectrum tuning, boy, let's get that guy, you know. So that's it, you tune it that way. Gauge is first string, nines, twelves, seventeens, twenty-fours. 
No, you play it just like a mandolin. You just play it like a guitar. You the you're, certain things are characteristic of the mandolin. The first thing, you paint stuff, right? Now go play louder and softer. It looks like feeling. Now the first thing you do to really be hip, don't tune the mandolin for the Italian stuff. Untune it. It's starting to sound weird. Now look out. Now it sounds like four mandolins. I didn't get it out of tune. It sounds hipper. I remember when I did the Godfather. There's always some kind of things coming in L.A. You never know what they're going to call you for, so just do it. Now, how about the country stuff? Now, when you do the country stuff, you go. Now, they don't know. You know, every once in a while, they want me to move my leg or something when I'm playing country. They think I look happy. They don't know. hundred bucks an hour. Look how happy I look. I don't have to smile. Happy. I'm happy. That's all I do. Other things. Every once in a while, we you have to do music from India. Greece. Iran. Iran. Just get one of them, one of them kind of skills going pretty soon. You'll be doing that stuff. What happened is recently I did that movie called Indiana Jones, The Temple of Doom. Well, if you people out there watch the movie, and if you remember some big banquet scene where they were eating bugs and nails, or I don't know what they were eating, a big bang. If you listen to the background, you're going to hear somebody going. <laughs> Guess who? I was able to buy a steak dinner while they were eating them bugs. So, like, now you understand about the mandolin. That's all I, I got to do with it. It's a convenience. Now, if you love mandolin, you want to... Or, or, okay, that's enough for a mandolin for me. Now just put it down here. Down, okay. I'm going to do a little sight reading stuff here with the two guitars. Every once in a while we have, uh, let me let me get the classic guitar. I'm going to do some a little classical piece. And the two guitars, myself and Joe here. I don't know if you remember. I introduced Joe Dalton earlier, didn't I? Okay, good. And we're going to do a little classical piece now. This is sheet music. You're, you're going to you're going to have a copy of there, just to kind of show you. Whenever we you have to play with, sometimes you have to play with two guitars, three guitars, four guitars, five cycles. You got to pay attention. Most of us, for some dumb reason. We listen, we only listen ourselves. Start listening and getting an idea of what's around you. And excuse me, just a second, let me grab the guitar. Okay, take a look at the music you have down there. And you'll see it's kind of classic orientated. So I'm going to count five beats. I come in on a six beat. One, two, three, four, five. in bar 16 of this music. You notice all of a sudden it caught me and I started playing sing alongs Because I, I didn't catch up with the 16th and the double notes. But you notice, you'd never know if you didn't see the sheet music. You, instead of going, I did. First reading through, no matter where you are, just read it through. If you couldn't get all the double notes, if you couldn't get none of them, forget it. Better to play with no mistakes. Because remember, the whole premise of this, playing guitar for a living. You know, if you're sitting with a 20-piece orchestra, play soft. Now, every once in a while, somebody says some dynamite thing. He says, well, my teacher says, if you're going to make a mistake, play a loud one. Well, that guy must have made about $14.13 as a musician, because that wouldn't work. 
When you make a mistake, play it soft. Through the years, as I started playing tuning, if I wasn't sure, I'd play. As soon as I was sure with the pot boil, I went all the way. Got the idea? So that's what I call sight reading, being sure. When he's playing, Joe's got to listen to me, and I got to listen to him. If I'm playing the lead part, he's got to listen to me. So whatever I'm doing, he's got to blend with it, no matter what it is. If I play it wrong or behind the time, that's what guitar part two does. All right, now let's get us to another sheet of music here. Now you see on this, you see a whole bunch of 16 notes. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to start playing. I'm going to play maybe eight bars of this thing. Joe's going to come in in bar three. And I'm going to play it all different ways. Maybe dotted eighth and sixteenth, or dotted sixteenth and thirty-second, or maybe just a jazz feel, or straight feel, or short. The whole idea is when he comes in bar three, all you guys, just listen to whatever I do. That's what you're supposed to do. Got the idea? Now, if you're in, in the, the studio, it's the same thing. If you're anywhere else, there's a one guitar player and a second guitar player. So I'm going to start playing this now. Notice when I played, I got louder, Joe got louder. He's accompanying me, and he listened to the feel I got. Now I'm going to start the same thing with a different feel, and I'm going to have Joe join me in bar three. And then however I play the first part, let's see if he joins me with the right feeling. It's liable to be loose, tight, it doesn't matter. But however I start, we'll see if he joins me in. Now you guys out there, you have the parts and you got buddies out there, right? Get together. Play them this way and play them that way. Now I'll play it a different way and he'll join me in bar three. Now we'll try it once more. This time I'm going to muffle it. Loud, soft, soft, loud. That's all you have to do when you're doing music and all these things. And this is kind of the way of sight reading. Sight reading is only as good as you sit down. Sight reading is a method of doing a lot of different parts. I'm not, I'm not one of the greatest guys who says, sight reading is dynamite. You never hear me say, well, let's go have a sight reading contest. You know, five of us. You never, you never hear me say, hey, guys, let's go down and hear Joe Pass read at the club. You know what I mean? Oh, no, I hear Larry Carlton's down. Let's go hear him read. You know, you got to play. You, we're players. We're all players. We love to play the guitars or the saxophones, whatever we have to play. The idea of reading just opens more doorways. In L.A., people like Lee Rittenauer and Larry Carlton, I worked the studios with them, and they started getting better. And they were, they were actually, actually, Jay Graydon was in there. They were good readers. That's why they were able to do other things. But when it comes to the nitty-gritty time, there were a lot of other great players there but couldn't do studio work because they couldn't read. Didn't stop them from being great players. I'm the first one. If you can't read, that's cool. It just stops some of your outlets. So remember, reading is for your benefit to be able to get into new material, new different things. Now, before the clo I close this, I have a thing here where I, where I have some notes that I wrote for myself through all the years. I call them life-saving devices for the students. These are things that I've, uh, I wrote in a book of quite a few years ago, and I've mentioned to students at different seminars, different things. I think they're tremendously helpful. Maybe one sentence will help you make a living playing guitar later, now. Because I know that I've used a few of these, and I've brought them to kids, and guys will come up to me. In fact, even the thing I talked to about uh, uh, conducting, one guy come and told me he's doing a Broadway show right now because all of a sudden he watched the conductor and he didn't blow it. But let me read a few of these things here. One has to do, like I say, 
with, and I'm a primary, one, one day, I, I, I tell you, I'm a very lazy person. You know, and this is the idea for you guys that are lazy. When you sit in with a group, use only your own equipment. This gives them your sound. Don't let strange equipment be the reason you don't get the job. The complete sellable product is you, you know, your sound. Don't blow it. I know how many guys are great players. I saw this happen. One of the finest players, we were at the NAMM show, and all of a sudden, I had a guitar that was dynamite, and I'm playing all, the, all my bebop and having a ball, and this guy's a great player. He come in, they must have given him a $13 guitar. He sounded awful. Now, fortunately, it was only 15 guys that looked at him. They were looking at him like he couldn't play. It had nothing to do with it. He had a bad instrument. Another thing I do, I keep my instruments in the trunk all the time. You never know when it's that opportune when the guy says, come in and play or sit in. I've done that all my life. My whole, my whole career, when I left back east, when I was uh, 23 years old, was because I sat in on the job. And he liked being the Ralph Martiri Orchestra. He liked my playing. Next thing I found myself in California doing TV work. And I went back there later, make a living. Don't be lazy. Bring the stuff up there. Another thing I like to say, if you can't play in tune, buy one of them tuners that are on the market. There's, there's nothing worse than hearing a guy play out of tune, especially where I've been. And I always kid, the first time I used a tuner was, was not that long ago, maybe five or six years ago. And uh, Jay Graydon was on, on a date, and here he had all these fancy tuners. I said, what are you doing? I said, it used to be you had to have good ears to play guitar, and now you have to have good eyes. I said, it doesn't matter your ear. And we kidded about it, but I'll tell you, it's invaluable now. Because like, you see it all over. If you're not in tune, you might work with a string section, it might be a little flat. And you, they might be a little sharp, you might sharp, and pretty soon you're so confused. Just go to it and you're, you're safe. Now, try and go to an occasional pop concert. I always say that. Even if you don't like the music, watch that conductor. Boy, you watch a conductor, just pay attention to that for two or three hours. You're going to know what's going on for the future, you know. Don't nickel and dime yourselves in terms of money, you know. And the reason I say that, don't let money be your object when you first get started. You go there, do it for nothing, do it for this, do it for this. Uh, every. There's a million reasons I do work. But when you first get started, you have to have people hear you. You have to have them hear you. Just go out, make every free rehearsal that you can. Got a guy say, well, I don't like the bass player. I could care less if you like the bass player. You might like the piano player. He might get a gig the next week. Anytime you have an opportunity to play with new people, whether they're good, bad, or great, kind of do it. Like I say, after practice, this guy might be the greatest piano player in life. That's why I like to use my story. Like uh, I studied, I was the, my teacher's worst student out of 2000. Okay, now, here I am. I hear all these stories of the dedicated study. My teacher to this day, his name is John Morell in Niagara Falls, New York, looks at me. He cannot believe I play guitar for a living. And he told me, he says, hey, I had over 2,000 students. You were the worst one. Hey, John, my time wasn't ready yet. When I was 24, I said, I'm going to be a guitar player like I told you. And these are all, all kinds of things that I'm talking about. One is take uh, all kinds of jobs for experience. I worked country jobs. Uh, Italian jobs, any job, because all of a sudden when you leave there, you realize how much more you know about whatever you're doing after four hours. You just sit home all day and be a living room guitar player, you know. Because guys always say, boy, he's a great guitar player, and he's always in a living room practicing. You know, I never heard of anybody breaking into the living room to hear a guy play. I've heard him breaking into the living room to steal his guitar, right? Hey, let's go and break in and hear him play. So get out there, get two day jobs, anything, rehearsals, right? When you take a job, it should have, like I always say, one of these qualities. Good money, or fun, or connections for the future, or for learning. It, if it has one of these things, it doesn't matter which one. Good money, hey, I've done some awful job, but I made great money. I've done some, I did uh, Fernwood Tonight many years ago. I don't know if you guys are too young for that one. But that was a fun job. All we did was play, play jazz and put-ons and just had a great, you know. So that was fun. We didn't make a lot of money like the studios. In Connections for the Future, I've worked with plenty of John Williams, the John T. Williams from the Boston Pops and all that. We worked together 35 years ago where he played piano. Now, we did things like this 35 years ago. Now I'm working with him as a conductor. Whoever knew, you know, that this was going to happen. These are kind of, kind of things that happen. One other I say, learn from each other. I'll hang around the halls at that GIT, and there'll be millions of students. Some, they can do some dramatic things. And I'll go and say, what's that? And he'll show me. He's excited to show me, and I'm excited to learn it. You, you find me, trade with each other, you guys. Yeah. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close now with a thing that I did a few years on the gong show. I don't know if you guys saw me, but a few years ago, I was on the gong show, and I went on as a ballerina. You know, And it was kind of funny when I did this tune on the, as a ballerina. They looked at me, because a bunch of my friends were on the show, you know, and they couldn't get over it. Now, the first thing I did, I walked on the stage, and the band naturally started laughing. But J.P. Morgan was a friend of mine. She looked up, can't believe I was on the gong show with this ballerina and guitar. Artie Johnson, I'd known for years. He's looking, cannot believe it. 
And fortunately, you know, the other girl, uh, Abby Lane, they didn't know what was going on, but they must have kicked her because all of them gave me a 10, you know, as a number one. So I won my $531.46 or whatever it was, my shower massage and 13 bars of soap, you know. And so it was kind of a gas to do this and then, you know, make the money. So I'm going to dedicate this to myself. Studio Players theme song called Was Number One. I used to be number one. I did all the work in L.A. In the 50s, I was something. The 60s and 70s, I was like a king. But when them 80s and rolled around, my name didn't mean a thing. But I've seen players, players come and go. Many great guitar players, we all know. I saw Barney Kessel bite the dust. And saw Herb Ellis feel the pain. Then I saw little old George Benson get into the singing game. But I'm still lucky, you see. Frank Zappa still says hello to me. I'm despondent and depressed, disgusted and forlorn. Cause all them Hollywood hotshots keep treating me with scorn. First I lost the Lawrence Welk show. Happened cause I won't smile all night. Then I lost the Johnny Man show. I stood up and cheered with delight. I thought I'd make a comeback someday. But Larry Carlton urged me. He urged me. He urged me. He urged me. He ur Larry, where are you? He urged me to stay away. Lee Rittenauer's been happy since I left the scene. Nobody picks on that little kid and treats him real mean. Glenn Campbell keeps telling me that I'm through. But it's been a lot of fun being number two, then three, then four, then five, then six, and seven, and eight, then nine. Now I'm like a Bo Derek, ten. Hope you get a lot out of this video. Thank you.